about what has happened to his life in Thailand since the death of Leo. And this is insight that we have not heard before, and I felt it's important for you guys to see it prior to the interview. Since the passing of Leo in Thailand, Tony Huge, who was his friend and was in Thailand when Leo's body was found, has come under fire from everybody, from mainstream news uh, to the people online, social media. He's gone through a lot of things in his life since that time. And I'm making this video, it's not going to be a really long video, but it's important because of two reasons. First is Tony's going to be on the channel next week. And uh, some developments has happened in his life since he interviewed with Amin, uh, which was released today. And we're going to discuss that along with some other questions that I have for him. And uh, the second uh, reason is, is because in the interview he did with Amin, there's something key that he's spoken about, about what has happened to his life in Thailand since the death of Leo. And this is insight that we have not heard before, and I felt it's important for you guys to see it prior to the interview. And if you guys want to see the interview, it's I think it's about two hours long. It's on Amin's channel. I'm going to link it in the bottom. And it's a good interview. It gives insight on things that we didn't know about, about Tony and what he's been going through. And I hope you guys enjoy the clip. And don't forget to check out the interview. It's going to happen next week. So look out for it. I was warned this. I was warned this long before I, I got there. They said, do not live there unless you're a certain type of person. But visit there and just make sure that everybody there knows that you're not a full-time resident there. And that will keep you out of most of the trouble. My problem is being full time there and then this that this whole thing that happened recently coming up and, um, you know, some incentive out there for people to figure out, you know, more about me. Uh, I've got a lot of stalkers. I've got people following me everywhere in Pattaya. So, like, uh, man, I, I I've just... I've just gone back to Pattaya a couple times recently, and each time there's someone waiting for me there, writing that, you know, it's it's following me, whatever. It's, uh, it's a weird feeling because on the one hand, I can defend myself. I'm not worried about someone following me around. Um, but they don't, they don't confront you. They're just, they're just taking right. notes and stuff. Right. That's what you said. Right. Right. So, I'm not afraid of these people, of course, but it's a weird thing when you have no privacy. Like I'm thinking, okay, and now I'm gonna like go in here and get, you know, a massage. And I'm thinking, God, is like someone gonna come in like while I'm trying to relax getting a massage? Or are they gonna note like which massage girls I see? Am I bringing liability to, all of my all the girls that I see because I see a lot of you know I have a lot of friends like am I going to bring liability to all my friends so then I'm like man I, I have friends that are uh you know that that value their privacy a lot too and like am I going to bring this drama into their life if I so so it's like everything you do during the day when you realize you have zero privacy anymore uh I, I guess it's like it's like if you're Brad Pitt and you know that there's a lot of good things to it. You're going to get a lot of free stuff and you know, lots of people are going to like you and every girl's going to want to be with you. Right. So that's the best parts of being famous or being in, in, in the comparing to a, the top high in celebrity, they will have paparazzi following them. Right. So they will have no privacy. They have to worry about anything they do is going to be caught in a picture. So it's the same sort of feeling as that, which which makes me just think, wow, maybe like maybe I should be more isolated 